Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> yes, yes. Hello, explorers. This is Benzino of The Wild Report. And today we are climbing one of the tallest mountains in this part of Japan because there is a pond at the top I found on the map that I think might have some absolutely incredible mountain dwelling amphibians. Let's head to the top and see what we can find. In the mountains of Japan, there is an amphibian like no other, an elusive salamander with a reputation for its incredibly potent toxins and vibrant coloration. This animal is extremely difficult to find, except for a short window in the rainy season during which they visit shallow freshwater ecosystems, which, conveniently enough, is right now. Okay, we're here at the peak of the mountain. Now it's time to hopefully find our secret pond. In this tree right here is what looks like basically a big ball of mucus. And actually, that's pretty much what this is. This is actually over 1,500 baby Japanese tree frogs. The females actually deposit their eggs as these huge masses right over a hopefully fishless pond. There's two reasons that these frogs do this. For one thing, no other species of frog deposits its eggs in trees. How crazy is that? So there's no competition from other tadpoles, and also there's no fish to eat those baby frogs. So the parents do this to give their offspring the absolute best chance at survival. But this secret mountain pond didn't just serve as a refuge for frogs. It was also a verifiable salamander paradise. I am literally surrounded by newts right now. They're all in the water here. It's like two inches deep, crystal clear. And these are the animals I was looking for. There's probably a hundred in this little pond. Unbelievable. They're fast though. Let's see if we can catch one. Got it, got it, got it. <sighs> yes, yes. Okay, let me bring it somewhere to film. Oh my gosh, no way. Okay, in my hand is one of the most amazing amphibians on planet Earth. This is the Japanese fire-bellied newt. And there are so many things that make this species so incredible. For one thing, they are endemic to Japan. That means you cannot find these anywhere else on planet Earth. This is it. And not only do they only exist here, these newts have some characteristics that are not found on any of our other salamander species. For one thing, they are called the fire-bellied newt. And check this out. Look at that incredible coloration on the belly. Now that is called aposematic coloration. It's when an animal has this really, really bright kind of gaudy color palette and these really extreme, usually very bright colors can be alarming for potential predators. And in the case of our fire-bellied newts, they are incredibly poisonous. They are loaded with what is called tritototoxins, which they actually manufacture inside their bodies. But the original source of these tritototoxins is in the insects that they're eating. Now, newts are interesting as far as salamanders go, because their life cycle is kind of flip-flopped from what you would expect of a typical amphibian. Well, all amphibians start their lives in the water, and newts are no exception. They start as aquatic eggs, then they hatch into fully aquatic gill larvae, and then something crazy happens. Whereas most other amphibians would spend one more cycle in the water before emerging as terrestrial adults, the fire-bellied newt actually spends the middle of its life cycle on land in what we call the eft stage. Part of the reason they do this is probably to disperse to new habitats. And then, as fully grown adults like this one, they will return to their aquatic existence. Now, unfortunately, these salamanders, like so many of our other amphibians, are not doing so well in terms of wild populations. They are currently listed as, I believe, a vulnerable species, mostly due to habitat destruction and water quality decline. Because these newts require these very shallow, clean, ephemeral wetlands in order to successfully reproduce. And the reason they need these areas is because there's not fish here. 
So the eggs in the larval stage of these salamanders do not get predated upon, at least by fish. It also doesn't help that they're literally only found in one place in the world, which is a giant island. But these really are amazing organisms. I think some of the coolest amphibians on the planet. I cannot believe that I'm actually seeing one in real life right now. I've seen pictures of these all over the internet for so many years, and this truly is a pretty magical experience for me. We'll go ahead and get this amazing animal right back in its natural environment. How cool is that? All right, bye buddy, thank you. Thanks so much for joining me today to learn about the amazing fire-bellied newt. Here's your sneak peek at the species that's going to be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. If you enjoyed learning about this incredible salamander, I highly recommend checking out my marbled salamander video for more amphibian content. I'll see you on our next adventure. But until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report, signing out.